Hey, I'm Ryan. Today, I'm gonna challenge myself to create a reality kit app using just my iPad Pro. I've done a previous video where I also did a similar challenge, you know, ju just using an iPad Pro using Swift Playgrounds. Um, and we're gonna step it up this time. We're gonna make it even more difficult. And so the plan for today is we're gonna uh, export a reality file from Reality Composer. We're gonna upload that to a cloud storage platform. And then we're gonna go into Swift Playgrounds and import that file and then run it in a Reality Kit uh, application. Now, the previous video, I, you know, I just did an AR Kit app and now we're gonna actually do a Reality Kit app you know, using just an iPad. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna export a, a reality file from Reality Composer. I've already uh, created many, many files in Reality Composer. And if this is your first time hearing about this app, I suggest that you watch um, a previous video that I did here on it, where it kind of like is an introduction, you know, into the app. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a happy birthday AR experience that I created for my friend a few months ago. And we're going to export this as a reality file. Now to do that, we're gonna do more options, export. We're gonna export only the current scene. There's really only one scene in this project, but we're gonna just select that. And then we're gonna say export. And we are going to save it to my iCloud drive. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna work um, to upload this file to a cloud storage uh, platform, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so we're gonna save it to my documents folder in iCloud Drive. Okay, so now we're gonna actually, um, we have to now upload our file to a cloud platform. Now you can use many types. Um, you have Amazon S3, you have Google Cloud Storage. Um, I haven't really used Google Cloud Storage before, so I'm gonna try and use that. So. This is literally gonna be just me learning and, and you joining me in on the process. Okay, so let's see. Um, we're gonna search Google Cloud Storage, uh, how to upload file. I don't, I don't know what the process is. I'm sure you can, uh, let's see. Okay, this is I think what we want. Um, we wanna upload an object and we're gonna use the Google Cloud Storage browser. Um, I'm not sure if this is supported on an iPad um, browser, but what I do know is that iPad Pro and iPad OS now have a desktop class Safari browser. So we'll see how this goes. Um, we're going to say open the iCloud storage browser. I'm gonna sign in with my account. So usually the way these cloud storage platforms work is you create a bucket and that bucket contains all the files. So in this case, this this platform is usually used to store images and videos. Um, but I'm gonna try to store an augmented reality file because if we can do that, then we don't actually have to package you know all the AR content with the apps, but we can just pull it down from the cloud. So we're gonna create a bucket. Okay, so name your bucket. We're gonna call this um, uh, iPad iPad only challenge. Continue, um, multi-region, yeah, that's fine. Continue, um, choose a default storage class for your data, standard best for short-term storage and frequently asked six data, okay. We're just gonna do standard. Okay, so fine grain seems to be that you can essentially set the, the access, uh, those are read and write permissions based on individual objects and uniform is just for the whole bucket. For now, we're just gonna keep fine grain. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do the basics and we can always edit this if we find you know, that it's not working. Um, we don't have anything in there, but I think we can already upload things. So let's try that. Um, we're gonna say upload file, browse, please have, okay, okay, we're getting there. And we can select our reality file. So now it's uploading, let's see how it goes. Okay, it's uploaded. Um, now, as you can see, it's 12 point something megs. So it's not public access and I need it to be public access. The reason why I need it to be public access is because we won't have any authentication in, in Swift Playgrounds. Um, so let's search for this. So Google Cloud Storage public access for file. How do we do that? 
Okay, so that's what we want. We want an individual file to have public read access. Okay. Okay, so we need to add a permission. I think I was right in the, in, in the beginning. We need to add a permission. So we're gonna type in all users. And so we're gonna save it. Um, okay, now we see, great. So now we see public to the internet. Now we can, in order to get the link, we can get, um, we can click on that link, that link icon, and you, you see the experience here, which it, it's showing that it's a reality kit um, file. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I tapped on it. So it seems to be working with um, AR Quick Look because I tapped on the file and it loaded it in. That's not what we wanna do. Okay, so now we have our link. That's fantastic. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go into Swift Playgrounds um, and we're gonna create a new file. Okay, so this is where the coding starts. Now, Swift Playgrounds is really powerful because you can actually write full Swift code and you have access to the full iOS library. Um, but I haven't ever done Reality Kit um, code in, in um, Swift Playgrounds. So let's try that. We're going to import uh, Playground support, and then we're going to import Reality Kit. Um, and just to kind of like save the link, I'm going to paste it in there um, just so I can access it. What we're first going to do is we're going to create a AR view. Okay, and that's important because we're gonna have to set the view in the playground. And so we're gonna create a frame for the AR view, which is gonna be a CG, uh, uh, CG, oh, I might have to import UI kit too. C, so this should be, C, yeah, there we go. I need a UI kit. Uh, a CG rect, sorry, we need a CG rect and we're gonna use uh, that constructor uh, where you do the X, Y, which is the origin really, and then you have the width, we're gonna do 400, and the height, we're gonna do 600. Um, and this is essentially the frame for the AR uh, view. Now we're gonna create the AR view, which is AR view, and we're gonna use the constructor, we're gonna use that constructor right there, we're gonna put in our frame, and then we're gonna do so AR mode, you can do, um, in Reality Kit, you can do a AR mode or non-AR. Non-AR is kind of if you go into AR Quick Look and you have kind of like a preview of the model without being in the physical space, that's non-AR. Um, so we're gonna do AR and we're gonna automatically configure the session. Um, this makes it super simple to get started in Swift Playgrounds. Now, so this is, we create, the first step is create um, the, AR view. Second step, we're gonna do, okay, so before we import our reality uh, model, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use a simple primitive cube to test if reality kit is working in Swift Playgrounds. Um, until recently, Swift, play, uh, Swift Playgrounds did not have support for reality kit, so I hope that it that now, now does. Um, we're gonna see how that works. So. We're gonna say uh, create or just um, load AR object. Um, and for now, we're just gonna use a primitive. So we're gonna say let mesh equals mesh resource. Um, and we're gonna generate a box of 0 0.2 meters. Um, keep in mind, anything in AR in, on iOS is in meters. So just make sure that you understand that. Okay, now we're gonna create a material. Um, in order to create an object in, in Reality Kit, you have to have a mesh, a material, um, and then you create a model entity from that. So we're gonna do a simple material, and we're going to say, we're gonna have a, let's do a blue color. The roughness is 0 0.5, and metallic will say true. Um, if you don't understand what the roughness and metallic are, play with it, experiment with it. Um, these are essentially uh, physically based rendering um, parameters and the roughness and the metallic uh, kind of make it, 
they dictate how the object ref, uh, reflects and refracts light and absorbs it. And so if you have something really metallic, it tends to be mirror-like. If something is really rough, you're gonna have, it's gonna be fine grain and you're not gonna see as much of a reflection. And so play with these values, you know, have fun with it. And, and you know, that's how I learned most of my um, coding skills really. And so now we're gonna create a model entity. Okay, and we are going to say model entity. I want a specific one. I want the one with a mesh and material. Um, so we're going to enter our mesh and then the material is a array of materials. So just enter in the one material in your array. And then the final thing that we're going to do is you have to, any object in reality kit has to be attached to an anchor. And so we're going to create an anchor entity object. And we're gonna say this anchor entity, the, the only requirement that we have is that it, it, it essentially spawns the anchor the moment it finds a horizontal plane. Um, now this will just randomly place the object wherever it finds a horizontal plane, so it's not specific as to where you want it. For a follow-up challenge, what I wanna do is I actually want to use Swift UI and allow you to place the object where you want it on a detected plane. And so that's even you know, more difficult than this. So that's, you know, if we can succeed with this, that's gonna be the next video. So if you wanna see that, like this video and subscribe. Um, okay, so now we have the anchor entity. Um, what we have to do next is we have to add our, um, Okay, so now we have to add our AR object to the scene. Now, the scene is a property of um, our AR view. And so we essentially say add anchor and anchor entity. Oop, I saw that we made a mistake. So we created our anchor entity in step two, but we didn't add our model entity to it. So it wouldn't just put anything there. So don't forget, we also should add our um, entity to our anchor entity, okay? So that code should work. And then the final thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually configure some of our playground um, page settings. So there's two things we have to do. We have to say playground page, the current page, um, and we have to uh, set live view to our AR view. So we're using a setting method or setter. Um, and then we're also going to do our current and we're going to say needs indefinite execution. So we want our playground to continuously run because you can't really have a camera feed in real time if you don't really do that. It might work without this, but I tend to just do this just to make sure. Okay, so now that we have this, let's try it out. Okay, so I am going to run this and let's see how it actually works. Okay. Okay, ah, there we go, it works, fantastic. Okay, so now we have our basic Reality Kit app working um, in Swift Playgrounds, which is exciting. What we're gonna do now, which is the more challenging part, is to import or really load our um, reality file that is stored in Google Cloud Storage into our Swift Playgrounds. Now, I've never done this before, so it, <laughs> I might struggle a bit, um, but you'll be able to learn as I learn and, and just follow along, okay? so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually duplicate our playground. And the reason why we're doing that is I wanna retain what, what is already working. And so we're gonna create a copy and go into this copy. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our URL. Um, URL string. Okay, so we're gonna create our URL object, um, let URL string equals that, and then we're gonna say URL string. Um, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do next now, instead of creating our own mesh you know, in code, which is very easy to do, we're now gonna create our model entity in a different way. Um, so I'm gonna comment all of this out, um, now we're getting an error because it's not finding the anchor entity. Don't worry too much about that. 
So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to, when you have this cloud storage, um, like content in the cloud, you have to bring it into the file system, right? You have to essentially download it, copy it to the file system. And once you have a copy, then you can load it in um, with that file URL. And so that's essentially what we're going to do right now. So we're going to create a, um, we're going to store this file in our documents um, storage on the actual, uh, on the actual iPad. And so we're going to say docs URL um, equals, uh, we're going to use our file manager and we're going to do default uh, and then URLs. So we're going to get our file manager um, and we want to get the URL to our um, documents folder. That's essentially what we want, right? Our documents directory. We want to make sure this is in the user domain mask. Okay. Now this is going to create several URLs. So, well, it, it, it returns an array. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure um, that we grab the first uh, document URL. Okay. That should only be we need be one. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, create our file URL. This is going to be our destination URL. So this is where uh, it's going to be stored in our documents folder. And so we're going to do our file URL. Uh, let's see docs URL pending bad component. And we're going to do our URL bad component. That's what we want to do. Uh, and we're going to force unwrap it. Um, and what this essentially does is it grabs the happy birthday dot reality. And I can actually, I'm going to print this out. And you can see what it essentially does. You, you know, when you don't really know, when you're experimenting with the API um, and you don't really know if it's going to work, just run it. Um, and then you'll be able to see what it outputs. Okay. So it's going to say, okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, it's just showing the back. So here it shows that URL, right? As you can see, it's a file URL um, with the happy birthday dot reality. So that works great. Okay, so let's close that out. Okay, so now we know that the URL that we have, the file URL, that's where we're gonna save this file. Now this is just, just, just the, the, the pointer essentially to it. We don't actually have the file yet. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna create a URL request because we want to do a download task. We want to download this file into the file system and then view it. And so we're going to create a URL session. Okay. So we have a default URL session and then we're going to create a request that request um, equals and then one URL. And then we have to make sure that we set our, um, our method to, um, to a get method. So if you're familiar with, um, HTTP or, you know, web, oh, I, I have to make this a var because we're modifying the object. Um, if you're familiar with, uh, building websites, you know, you have a get, you have a post, you have a put, and I think a delete or something like that. Um, and it's your basic CRUD operations. And so we want to get our file. So that's what we're getting the HTTP method that we're going to use. Okay. So now that we've um, configured our request, what we want to do next is we want to create a download task. Now a download task is essentially an asynchronous background method that will download the file for us. And once we have that file, we're going to copy it into our file system. That's why we have our file manager. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to create our download task um, using our URL session. So download task URL session, um, and we want to do it with a URL request. So we're going to do that with a request. And then what we want to do is we want um, this to be our cloud URL response and then error. Um, okay. And then, uh, okay. There's a few things that we have to do with our file system. If the file already has been downloaded, so if we ran this program before and the file has been downloaded, 
if you essentially try to copy the file again into the file system, it's going to throw an exception. And so we have to make sure that before we download a file to check if it's already there, because then we don't have to download it. And so we're going to say if um, file manager dot default um, exists, file pad exists. So, uh, and then we're going to say file URL pad. So if our now we have to essentially say if it doesn't exist, right? So we uh, essentially put an exclamation mark in front of it. Um, if our file does not exist, then we want to essentially get it from our cloud. Um, then we want to copy it from the cloud onto our file system. And so we're going to say file manager dot default copy items. Um, and we're going to say cloud URL to file pad. So we're, we have to use file pads, not the actual URLs. Um, we have to use file pads. Okay, great. Now, once we have this file, um, we actually have to load it into our model. Now, loading a model um, can actually throw an error. And so we want to properly handle this exception. And so we're going to do a do catch block um, to do that. Just so that if there's an, an, an exception thrown that we can actually alert the user or in this case, we're just going to print a debug um, statement. Okay, so now we're going to do do. And let's see. Yeah, so now we can actually load in our model entity. So we're going to say model entity equals model entity oops, dot load from contents of URL. And this is going to be the file URL. Um, and yes, this throws an an exception can throw, so we have to make sure that we do a try. And then we're going to create an anchor entity. Okay, so anchor entity, which is going to have a horizontal alignment. So we want to essentially create an anchor wherever uh, Reality Kit or Air Kit finds um, a horizontal plane. So it's not necessarily in a specific location, it's just going to be wherever um, the classifier has found a horizontal plane. And then an important part, don't forget to add your model entity to your anchor entity because that um, I do that all the time. And so uh, I'm trying to always remember not to do that. Okay, so add child, model entity. And then for the final, um, uh, then we have to also copy or at least move that statement in here because we also have to add our anchor entity to our AR view scene property. Um, otherwise, it won't work. And so this should be all the code. Um, let's hope it works. So I'm going to try and run it and see if it actually works. Oh, well, I made a mistake. I always do this. Um, so one thing that you have to do when you set up the, the download task, you actually have to start it. And I always forget that. Um, so you have to, um, after you create the task, that's just the configuration of it. You have to actually set don download task dot resume. And so that's why I wasn't doing anything. Um, and I was getting scared, but uh, I think this should work. Oops, bug and client of S assertion failed block was expected to execute on queue. Okay, well, this is interesting. Um, I made a mistake, but this is a very important mistake. Okay, when you have a download task, this is a background thread. And to actually load something in the AR view, you have to be on the main thread. And so this do catch block has to be embedded in a um, main thread or in the main thread. And so we have to actually do a dispatch queue dot main async. Uh, and that's where we want to load in our model entity. And so we made several mistakes along the way. Um, but mistakes are fine. That's how we learn. That's really how our brain programs itself to not make it the second time or the third time or the 10th time. Um, so important things to remember, you have to use a main dispatch queue to load in the model into reality kit. And then you should also resume the download task once you have it properly configured 
otherwise it will not work. Okay, so let's try it yet again, and hopefully this time it actually works. Oh, there is a problem. Uh, let's try it again. Okay, so it's not working. Um, I don't know what it's doing. So it just says there is a problem. Okay, so I looked over the code and I couldn't find any issues. Um, it was showing, you know, a generic error saying this. So I, I can actually show you what it shows. Um, right, it just says there was a problem encountered while running this playground. Check your code for mistakes. And one thing I've noticed is that Swift Playgrounds is a bit finicky. Um, there, there actually may be a memory limitation or a file size limitation. And so what I'm going to do now to kind of see what the issue actually is, I'm going to create a second reality file in Reality Composer that is much smaller. And then we're going to see if it has the same error. Because my, my intuition tells me that maybe the file um, is um, too large or something. And that might be an issue. And so we're going to just create a simple reality file. Let's make something gold. And then what we want to do is we want to rename it to uh, gold cube. And then we are going to export it. And we're going to select a reality file and save it to files in our documents folder. So we're doing exactly the same that I, I did for the happy birthday experience. And then we're going to go to our bucket, upload a file, browse, add the cube. Okay, so this is like 183 kilobytes as opposed to 12 megabytes. And so that might be the issue. Uh, again, we have to make this public. So we're going to add a user group for all users. And we're just going to give them read access. Um, this gives us a URL. There we have our URL. So we're going to copy that. And we are going to put it in our Swift Playground. So it's a much smaller file. And so let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, then we fell flat on our face. Um, I'm going to have to reach out to Apple to see you know, if there's any issues or you know, if it's a known bug. And then I'll have to create a follow-up video. But let's just try this and, and see if it works. Right? It's not always going to work. That's why this is a challenge. I didn't know if it was going to work. So let's try it. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I think I was right. Um, Swift Playgrounds has a limitation when it comes to file size. Um, I don't necessarily know what the restrictions or constraints are on file size and why I'm getting this error. Um, but as you can see, um, as you can see, it was working uh, and it was working flawlessly. So I was able to get the gold cube from my Google Cloud storage, which is um, just the URL. And um, it was able to load it in, find no errors. And so that is extremely important when you're debugging um, you know, your apps. When, when something is not working and if the error isn't meaningful, it is very hard to debug. But the first thing you have to ask yourself is, okay, what, what about my current example? is an issue, right? Could it be the file name? Could it be the file size? Um, usually when things crash and don't have, you know, sophisticated messages as to why it crashed, it is either a, the file doesn't exist, the file is too large, um, the file is corrupted, um, the file is not supported. And so it's always these, these weird edge cases. Um, and apparently, uh, the 12 megs might be too much for Swift Playgrounds. Now, if you are recording a app in Xcode, this likely wouldn't be an issue, right? 12 megs, I mean, that's no issue. 
So this is likely a thing that we've experienced with, you know, working on an iPad. Um, but it is incredibly exciting that we can do all of this. I've never touched my MacBook for any of this, right? So we were able to uh, create a file in Reality Composer or create a scene in Reality Composer, then exported it, uploaded it to Google Cloud, right? Even created a bucket on Google Cloud. And then we were able to get in this object from the cloud into our, our, our Swift Playgrounds app and we were able to show you know it actually running. Now it was a struggle as you saw because we didn't have we didn't know that there was a file size limitation but at least we know we can put something in the cloud, grab it in Swift Playgrounds and test it. Now for my follow-up challenge what I want to do is is I actually want to create a full AR app with Swift UI and have like UI elements in the AR view and be able to place objects in my scene, um, essentially where I want to place them, right? So this is just randomly placed at a horizontal plane. I want to be able to place them at a location that I actually want to, um, like a specific location in space. And so if that sounds, you know, like a, a nice challenge to you, um, maybe join me in this challenge, right? Get your iPad out. Um, and, and try to build a full AR uh, app using RealityKit and Swift UI, and you know try to do it faster than I did. I think I struggled a bit. Um, I'm, I might be a little bit rusty because I haven't coded in you know in, in a week or two. But um, follow along, try it out. If you know why this was happening, where you know the file size was too large, if you know why, please leave a comment below, and and just share with everyone else why you think. Uh, this is. Again, if you really enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please uh, thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like these.